Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 news. The silly season this time around seems to be upon us yet again with loads of rumours emerging around what exactly is going on with Ferrari. The word on the street is that Charles Leclerc has signed a new contract with Ferrari for at least two years up to potentially a maximum of five with a massive payday coming along the way. Carlos Sainz though hasn't exactly got what he's wanted from the Scuderia and has actually signed a pre-contract elsewhere and will almost certainly leave the team it seems after the 2024 season. Very much intrigued your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always. First of all, just to double down on what we actually mentioned yesterday, and then there were some rumours around it later in the day, on Red Bull's junior plan. Their junior programme is changing a little bit. They have funded really a lot of drivers in Formula 2 for some time, and, um, and also in the lower categories. They will be focusing on alternate approaches, and Chris Norder has said, Helmut Marko has said, that they're going to thin out their programme of the amount of drivers they support, and refocus perhaps on some lower formulas down, looking for a Verstappen, looking for a Vettel. They don't come along every season, he says, just making sure you can identify a talent when it does come along. Now, this also is aligns with rumours that they're interested in Alex Polo. He's currently just absolutely killing it in the IndyCar Championship and is a real top quality driver as far as I'm concerned. They might want him in Alpha Tauri. That was the rumour that we discussed yesterday, but there's also rumours that Williams are interested. Now, do you think Alex Polo, he's currently driving for Arrow McLaren or whatever it is, technically called out there in IndyCar and is winning the championship quite emphatically. Does he really want to come to Formula 1 and drive a Williams? Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I think there's a debate to be had about that. McLaren have him and I think he drove, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Austin last year, right, where he drove the McLaren and was very impressive in that last year's car. But they've got Lando, they've got Piastri, they're not going to be making moves there, I don't think. So maybe Polo has options, but does he want to go and join the Helmut Marco show at AlphaTauri or Hugo Boss Bulls Racing or whatever it's going to be called? Or Williams, I'm not so convinced, but it's at least an option that might potentially be on the table. Now, on the Ferrari side of the equation, this is where the big debate has been had around Vasseur and Leclerc. When Vasseur joins, they've got that history at Sauber, Alfa Romeo Sauber, and now they're both rejoining at Ferrari. I think it was somewhat inevitable that Sainz would find himself being a little bit of the old man out in this scenario. Despite the fact that Leclerc has not exactly dominated science this season, certainly not in the point standings, I think in terms of race and qualifying combined, Leclerc has beaten science 15 times out of 24, roughly across the 24 sessions, qualifying and race over this season so far. But I think we've all known that Vasseur wants to lock Leclerc down to a long-term deal. Whether this is good for Leclerc is another question entirely, but even before Vasseur joined, he's made it very clear that, and the rumour was, that he would in time establish a clear hierarchy at Ferrari with a number one driver in place. It may take him one season to fully accomplish that, but it's quite clear the way that Ferrari have been conducting these negotiations by saying, hold on Carlos, we'll talk with you later, and focusing on Leclerc, that that's their plan. This was also a quote that he said quite a while ago now, but Leclerc is part of the project, in every single team you always build around a driver. Lewis at Mercedes, Michael at Ferrari, Fernando at Renault, of course in the more you know present day, Verstappen at Red Bull, Vettel at Red Bull, many such examples. And Ferrari want to do the same thing rather than this whole you know, weird thing where they haven't really wanted to commit with Leclerc as their number one driver. This is in addition to rumours that Bonotto is going to Alpine in very short order. That was the rumour a few days ago and apparently that deal is almost done. It does remind you of a bit of like a out of the frying pan into the fire type idea. I don't know if this is good for Bonotto personally, but still, that's apparently happening. And if Bonotto was to give Leclerc a call to say, hey, come with me, I think he would immediately put the phone down, to be honest. And the rumour says he has signed his new contract extension with Ferrari Formula One. Is this a good move for Leclerc? It's tough to say. It hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but over the last couple of days, we have seen more and more reports on this. And yeah, the rumour is that this is now a done deal. And he's spoken with Red Bull, apparently. We heard the rumours about that a while ago. Also spoken with Mercedes, Alpine, and Aston Martin before reaching a, what is supposedly a two plus three contract renewal. Now, I imagine Leclerc has structured this such that it's not Ferrari that has the decision on his extension. Hopefully, at least, he has the decision on his extension. He can stay two years beyond his current contract. So his contract ends at the end of next season. He will then do two more years guaranteed, 2025 and 2026. That is quite good timing, I think, because the new regulations arrive in 2026. He can drive that season with Ferrari. 
if they've nailed it, because usually when new regs happen, one team nails it. Generally, it was Red Bull this time, it was Mercedes the time before. Maybe it's Ferrari in 2026. If Leclerc gets lucky, and then he can see in 2026, are they going to be good? Because if Ferrari are nowhere in 2026, then he can probably safely say, you know what, let me go elsewhere. Whether that's to Mercedes, whether that's to Red Bull, whether that's to Aston Martin, maybe they're a top team at that point. Maybe McLaren are a top team at that point, who knows? But um, if there are alternatives, then Leclerc could leave. At the present day, I, I'm inclined to believe this is the correct decision for Leclerc because where's he going to go right now? Red Bull probably don't want him alongside Verstappen and even if they did, would he have an option there? Hamilton's going to stay at Mercedes, we believe, for some time. If Hamilton had made it clear that he was going to retire after this year, then sure, Leclerc would have more of a decision on his hands, I think. But... As it stands, I think this is the correct call for Leclerc, but he's just got to be careful that he doesn't waste his whole career at Ferrari because that is a bit of a concern, especially in Leclerc's position when you drive for Ferrari for a long time and have had some race wins and had some nice moments, but not really got particularly close to a championship. He must have a lot of uh, faith in Fred Vasseur to turn the ship around and hope that all the politics games that are played on higher up at the Scuderia actually are not so tragic this time around in this era now under the sir so potentially this could take him until the end of 12 or at least until 2029 right because that would be in addition to the 27 8 and 9 seasons if he was to extend at that time and apparently if he does commit to the entirety of this contract he will earn at roughly 185 million euros at ferrari which is pretty much 41 million dollars a year 37 odd I suppose million euros a year like that ain't too bad and it's very similar to what Verstappen is earning right because Verstappen's earning something like 40 mil Hamilton's salary has been pretty similar to that but almost every other driver has been quite substantially below this will put Leclerc as theoretically like one of the top earners so they're very committed here they're trying to tell Leclerc like look you're our guy, we're going to build around you, the Sir agrees with it, and we're going to make you a world champion. And Leclerc must buy into it, or he thinks, you know what, this is currently my best opportunity, as I'm inclined to agree with. Fundamentally, though, they're not doing great this year. They're fourth in the championship as it stands, only 191 points, which is one of their worst seasons since 2010. Despite the fact that last year, you'd have thought, well, this car's pretty good, right? They should be able to capitalize on this. Not been the case for Ferrari. Leclerc is running out of patience, I think. But I guess he's confident they can turn it around. One man that does seem to have lost slightly more patience with Ferrari, I would say, given the way that he's commented in interviews and other situations, is Carlos Sainz. And I think he probably expects that after his contract is up at the end of next season in 2024, at the end of that season, he probably will go elsewhere. It's likely that Frey will look for another candidate alongside Leclerc. And even if they aren't looking for another candidate and they want Sainz to stay... I think he will have to recognize at that point that he's going to be the number two. This is very clear with the way that Ferrari have conducted these negotiations because Leclerc and Sainz's contract, they both end at the end of next season, but they've negotiated this deal with Charles and not yet with Carlos. So Sainz should get the message here and is likely to want to leave anyway, I would say at that point, unless magically their car next year becomes godlike again. He's also made his point clear that he wants to go into next season knowing what's happening beyond that season. If you go into a season with no contract for 2025, you're going to be a little bit nervous about the whole situation, I imagine. And the rumor is that he has signed a pre-contract. These are quite common in Formula One. It doesn't necessarily lock in the arrangement, but it shows willingness on both sides to entertain that discussion with Audi. And this has been talked about for quite some time because Carlos Sainz Sr., his father, like um, a rally driver basically, has very strong links with Audi and has been around there for a long time. So it kind of only made sense that Sainz Jr. might go to join that outfit at some point. And from 2026, they, well, who knows how good they're going to be. They're going to effectively take over Sauber. They're making their own engines. They could be a real contender if they nail it. And Sainz could be their, potentially their lead driver, at least in that position. So I think Sainz probably, I would say, feels more optimism around his, let's just say, world championship winning ambitions at that team, if they were to just magically nail it in 26, than staying at Ferrari, especially knowing the way that Ferrari are going with having Leclerc as their number one guy. So that's the rumor that in 2025, he's going to join Sauber. And by then, it's basically going to be Audi. They'll still 
will have Ferrari engines, Sauber, in 2025, and it won't be officially Audi until 2026 that actually completely runs the show. But it seems to me that both Science and Audi are pretty down to make this happen. And you'd also think that Audi would want a German driver as well. There's been talk about Mick Schumacher. There's been talk about trying to get Sebastian Vettel out of retirement. And we'll see about that. But um, I think this has been, this makes sense. Now, I don't know if they're just completely making this up. We don't know if there's any valid like reason behind these rumors. But I think from the things we've heard over the last few months, this would be sensible. And probably in 2025, we're going to have a different driver lineup at Ferrari with Charles Leclerc plus one. Who's that plus one going to be? Is it going to be someone else on the grid right now? Could it be even a Lando Norris? Or is it going to be one of their junior drivers such as Oliver Behrman if he really makes a name for himself over the coming years? So, um, and also Norris has commented on this and said that he does kind of want to stay with McLaren. It's a cooler story to stay there to win. But, um, you know, I've said it a few times. I'm not particularly confident in the McLaren, even if they were to make massive strides, are ever going to be able to win a championship in the near term just because you know, they're still a Mercedes customer and they still will be in 2026. And I always think that takes something of a toll. Just one final thing as well. We saw right at the start of the season when Lance Stroll broke his wrist right and somehow managed to actually compete at the first couple of races of the season. But Toto Wolf, now he's not driving, so it's probably less of a big deal. But he's, um, he's on holiday. He's thinking about the car. He's thinking about all the money that he's making. And um, he's also fractured his elbow in a cycling accident, which is kind of wild. It was actually, I think Susie Wolf put this out on Instagram earlier today with his arm in a bit of a cast. So definitely pretty unfortunate. And just speaking quickly of Mercedes, this is a rather remarkable statistic that I'm surprised that I'd never heard before. But since 1952, so pretty much since the start of Formula One, there has been a British anthem played at some point in the season every year for either a team that's a British team primarily or for a driver. So for this too, and this has happened every single year since 1952, if Rebel win everything, that streak will come to an end. So it would take a victory for either of the Mercedes drivers, both British or for like McLaren, if like Piastri was to win that I guess McLaren would have the British anthem plays. And um, I guess if Albon was to win at the Williams or if uh, Sargent was to win at the Williams, the same story would apply. And I guess the same for Aston Martin now you think about it. So basically if anything other than a Red Bull victory happens, happens, then this will, this streak will continue. But, um, you know, it's looking a little bit suspect right now, let's be honest. But very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.